Here we are. This is episode number three. Um, the lid, as you know, was glued up. And all I really did with this was just cleaned up the ends a little bit and trimmed it up. So it's uh, pretty much good to go. I explained last time that we put a finish on this panel because it's easier to do it before assembly than after. Um, also, you'll notice here there's a little piece right here. And that's going to be for our lid stay. We'll get around to that in a bit. But this show is going to be about the hardware. And we've got all the hardware in the house, so uh, I can't wait to show it to you. First thing we have here are the handles for the side. These are the handles. They're really neat. They come in two pieces, like this. And they're cast. Very simple to make. They've made them like this for a couple hundred years, and I was lucky to find them. Um, and they're going to go on like this. And you can see once they're bolted on or screwed on, they're going to work just great. Just put a coat of paste wax on them and they came out very well. So that's our uh, handles for the case. Now the lid stay. Uh, when I was down at Roy's place, uh, we looked at three different tool chests from the 1700s, 1800s to early 1900s. And every single tool chest had screwed up hinges. You could see where they had replaced the hinges many, many times in the life and history of the tool chest. And that's because it's a weak point. When this lid gets so far, it can damage the hinge. And they put lid stays along the back to keep it from going any further. But even that got ripped out a lot of times because of the mechanical advantage, the leverage that the lid had. So I'm going to go ahead and put a chain lid stay that attaches here and here. I'm not crazy about using a chain, but I think that it's a little bit stronger way to support the lid. And if I don't like it, we'll pull it off. But that's the plan. Let me show you that. Um, this is the lid, lid stay. Solid brass. And it's lacquer coated. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the lacquer and I have a darkening solution which will make this black. So hopefully uh, it won't be too bad looking when it's in place. But that's how that's going to go. So I think the lid will have a secure uh, attachment point and it'll be hopefully not damaged in the life of the, uh, the chest. So that's the lid stay. And then here we have a mortise, half mortise lock and this will go on to the front. This is the front here and I'm going to mortise this out and then this will go here. There'll be a small keyhole in the front and uh, that'll operate the lock. Um, like this. And this piece goes on to the lid. So uh, solid brass, really neat uh, neat lock. Cost me about $35. They're not cheap. But I'm told they've been making them just like this for a couple hundred years. They haven't changed the design. The same company. So that's neat. Now let's get to the hinges. The hinges. Um, this is your typical hinge that you get in the hardware store. It's called a butt hinge, and uh, it just doesn't seem to work on this kind of period uh, piece because it's zinc coated and it looks like it came from Home Depot. I don't like this at all. So you can buy antique hinges, but they just scream ye old antique. Uh, they look phony, and I don't like them either. Uh, there are people that have different methods for antiquing store-bought hinges like this, and they were just ridiculously involved. They involved caustic chemicals, acids, all kinds of weird recipes. Um, one guy buries his hinges in his backyard for, for 10 years. I mean, one guy uses a blowtorch, heats his hinges, then throws it on the ground and pees on his hinges. And he claims, after you do that three or four times, that you get great antique hinges. There's got to be a simpler way. So I found a way on the internet, and it involves household vinegar and a stuff called gun bluing uh, fluid. You can get this in a gun shop. This is what turns steel into that neat gun blue look that we see on firearms. But you have to get the zinc off first. So you take this thing, you throw it into a Tupperware container or an empty yogurt container, and you cover it with plain old household white vinegar and you let it sit overnight. 
and overnight the vinegar eats off all of the zinc coating and you wind up with one of these. So you can see we're already starting to look better. This has been de-zinced overnight. Very simple to do. Um, then you wash that off really good, put it in a hair dryer so that it doesn't rust and, and, and uh, get spoiled that way. And then you um, clean it and degrease it with acetone. So I've wiped this with acetone so there's no grease on it here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the gun glue on right now. Hopefully this will, this will all work and I won't create a mess. So here we go. Okay, now watch this, it's pretty neat. This is a clear liquid. Now watch what happens. Isn't that neat? <laughs> like magic. It doesn't come off. Uh, you you uh, buff this with steel wool and you give it a couple coats and what you wind up with put this all away what you wind up with are these this is the same hinge with the gun blowing coating on it and I think it looks really really neat um, you can see here it's gonna look great on the tool chest very inexpensive. You can do it overnight, and it doesn't involve a blowtorch or a full bladder. <laughs> so, 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 so that's that. Um, what next? The screws. Um, I didn't want to use Phillips head screws because they're too modern looking. And I discovered something interesting. If you go to the hardware stores, you can't find slot head screws anymore. They won't sell them. So, uh, fortunately, you can buy them. There are places that sell screws. You can you pay them, buy, buy them individually. And I have a collection here. These are the old-fashioned slot head screws, and they've even be, been de-zinked. They come that way. These are old stock that they uh, purchased, and now they sell them to, to woodworkers. And for 25 bucks, you can buy a lifetime supply of these kinds of screws. Let's see. Another thing I don't like about the, um, the Phillips head is they're really designed for assembly line, factory use. Uh, the problem they have with slot head screws is that they can be over torqued when you're using a power screwdriver, which the assembly line workers used. Um, the uh, Phillips head is designed to actually cam out and slip once it reaches a certain degree of torque. That explains why when you're using a Phillips head screwdriver you have to push against it so hard to keep it from slipping. So I hate that and uh, these slot heads won't um, slip, especially when you have a screwdriver like this. This is called a cabinet maker's screwdriver and uh, you can see the ends here have been milled. The thickness is usually tapered, but on the very tip, they've actually milled the ends so that the sides of the taper are parallel. And what that means is that this screw will lock into the screwdriver very nicely. And you can see that that just won't come off. It's not magnetic. I know that's what you're thinking. Watch. It's not magnetic. It's just locking into that slot which is kind of neat. The only problem is that you need a lot of screwdrivers. One size does not fit all. And I have <laughs> seven of them for all the different sizes of screws. So it's impractical for home use, but in a shop it's nice, it's nice to have Let's a complete see them set. Again. Hold them out. There they are. And uh, these didn't cost much more than a, a set that you'd buy at Home Depot. So, kind of cool. That's that. Um, where to from here? What am I thinking? Um, 
I think we've got everything done. Uh, this whole project came to a screeching halt um, because I came across some wood that I've been looking for to complete another project and I thought I would show that to you and then we'll close the show. Um, about two years ago I made a hanging corner cupboard out of tiger maple and uh, as soon as we hung it on the wall we realized that we really needed a corner table to sit underneath. And I didn't have enough tiger maple to really finish it, but I got this far with it, and I'll show you. Voila. Here it is. And you can see the nice tiger maple here. And these legs I bought uh, rather reasonably from a, a company that turns the legs. These are also tiger maple. But the problem was, excuse my hiding over here. <laughs> The problem was that the top had to be made from poplar. I didn't have any tiger maple for the top, and I needed the ideal piece. I couldn't find it. So I made a temporary top, and here it is. That's it. I'll move this down. Here's the top I made. Three pieces edge glued together, very plain looking. And I even just used uh, pocket screws to assemble it. I didn't even glue it. So it's a temporary top that worked, but I've been looking for the past two years for tiger maple. There's only one store that occasionally has it, and I have to pick through the pile. I go there all the time, and nine times out of ten I'm empty-handed. I don't find any kind of tiger maple at all. But anyway, two weeks ago I found the perfect piece of tiger maple. So I was able to edge glue that, and make a replacement top, and here it is. Voila! That is a beautiful tiger maple top, and you can see how consistent that tiger maple pattern is. That is really hard to find. I think this is the nicest piece of tiger maple I have ever found. So I glued it up, and then I just cut it out, and there it is. So. What we're going to do is we're going to assemble this real quick. I'm going to speed up the tape and then we're going to put this in place. I'm going to show you where it is in the house. This, I think, goes in the campfire. No. Jonine says no. So, anyway, we'll do that. I'm going to put this. Jonine uh, just asked me why I didn't use the slot head screws on the table that I just assembled and the reason is because we're not going to see those screws. I use Phillips head screws because I got them but I'm going to be using the slot head screws for appearance uh, mainly so that's why I did that. So that's our show. I have no idea what the next show is going to be about but we'll be somewhere along in the process here and um, I guess that's going to be it. Do I have to say anything else? It's not. Okay, that's the show. We're done.